You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's something you may on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Nevin. So y'all, before we jump right into it, I'm just going to remind y'all again of our Patreon. Don't forget to, if y'all want to support the channel more, you can sign up on our Patreon. We've got three tiers, bronze, silver, and gold. All of them get access, all of them get access to our uh, community Discord server, and uh, you get permanent access once you sign up once. So, and people who sign up for gold will get some exclusive rewards and all tiers will have access to not safe for work videos on the Patreon. So yeah, I'm gonna be uploading some very, very not safe for work stuff uh, uh, that, uh, that I cannot put on YouTube. So yeah, if y'all want to see that, just sign up for the Patreon. It's as, it's as low as five dollars. Anyway, y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back in, shall we? Alarm Chan, you are up, and let's go. <laughs> all right. All participants are offered a room in the castle for the duration of the competition, once their registration has been verified. This avoids unnecessary expenses, and we can keep an eye on you to prevent any attempts at sabotage between competitors. Oh, now I see why I should have known all this. Well, free bedroom in the castle, I'm clearly not going to complain about that. But if it's fairly obvious to me why I wasn't aware of this information, I wonder what Aket's excuse is. That was Aket. Oh yeah, Aket. That's Aket. Okay. Ah, oh, I think I read that somewhere. I kind of forgot, I guess. I don't have a very good memory, you know. I have trouble remembering details like that. He blushes in embarrassment and looks away as I stare at him, bird brain. I guess the next stop is the castle, then? Indeed. Given your circumstances, I will make sure to cut through the administrative work. Figuring, figuratively speaking, of course. That way you can sleep in the palace tonight. Gillian enters the conversation while looking straight ahead as he walks. I realize that the crowd seems to be letting us pass as he approaches, as if avoiding the panther. I wonder if it's a, I wonder if it's his intimidating look or his status. The cod did say he's captain of the royal guard, after all. The rest of the walk to the castle is relatively quiet, interrupted every now and then by a remark from one of us. It's not so much that I don't want to talk to them, but fatigue is starting to weigh on my shoulders. I need a bed right now. I can't even properly appreciate the marvelous stone building we are approaching. As we pass through the castle gates, we are greeted by two armored guards who let us pass after seeing Gillian, giving him a brief nod. The interior of the palace is huge. We first enter through a large courtyard with several doors and stairs leading to other parts of the building. I can see a few guards posted inside as well as a couple of richly dressed people. However, before I have time to inspect my surroundings any further, a cavernous voice suddenly explodes through the halls, giving me a huge earache. Tenok! Turning back, turning to look at the lizard, I have the strange satisfaction of seeing him with a worried expression, his scales slightly paler than usual. However, Tenet quickly pulls himself together and smiles as he steps back. Well, gentlemen, it was a pleasure to meet you. That's my cue to disappear. I hope you all have a great evening. Oh, and if you could hold him back for a bit, I'd really appreciate it. Hold him back? Who is... Before I can say anything more, the lizard rushes to one of the stairs next to us. He is faster than I expected. Where have you been? You missed our training session, Gilliant. Oh, God. He looks angry. A stern-looking bear in full armor comes from a corner of the hallway and stands majestically before us. Two guards stand behind him, and they are ridiculously small compared to this juggernaut of a warrior. Said warrior frowns and turns to Vakad and Gilliant. And on top of that, you bring us even more refugees. Take good care of them, at least. It would be a shame to tarnish our reputation. It is true that the people of Frostfang are known for their hospitality, but I'm beginning to wonder if their kindness seems warm only in contrast to the, inhospi to, the inhospi to the inhospitality of the wilderness. That being said, I've been mistaken for a lot of things I'm not today, and I'm really getting tired of it. Excuse me, sir, but we are not refugees. We are bards, and we are here for the competition. We found them surrounded by bandits. If we hadn't intervened, they would be dead by now. The cod looks at me harshly, but the bear stops him with a wave of his paw. The giant in armor addresses me directly with a strangely amused look. And is the idea of coming here without an escort also yours? If you had not been attacked by bandits, you would have been eaten by wild beasts. There's one thing I'm not in the mood for right now, it's that kind of comment. I'm exhausted. It's been a shitty day. I still have the stench of death in my nose, and I've already taken reprimands from a cod. So it's possible I let a bit of my anger get through in my voice when I respond a tiny, tiny bit. Perhaps if your kingdom maintained and guarded its roads, in short, if you did your job, we could travel safely. This time, not only Gillian and Vakad, but all the guards around us are giving me an insistent look, and one of them even puts his fingers on the handle of his sword. The bear has a stunned look on his face, and for a moment, I'm starting to think I may have screwed up big time. My muscular in-, in God, I always hated that word. 
my muscular interlocutor, interlocutor, interlocutor suddenly burst out laughing before slapping me on the shoulder. Although he was very clearly holding back, I could feel my bones cracking from the shock, as if he had suddenly put all my bones back in place. Second y'all, water time. Ah, good music. Ah, this one has a sharp tongue. If you're not good enough to win, I'm sure you'll make a perfect jester. I feel the heat of my annoyance rise in my muzzle as I hear what he says. A jester? You look like a fucking jester. He can stick his jester up his big fur... Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Calm down and focus, Eloi. Let's be nice to the nobility. I'm sorry to disappoint you, but I fully intend to win the competition. You have to find someone else to play the fool. In that case, I can't wait to see what you're capable of. But I must warn you, my fathers are hard to please. His fathers? Why do I give a fuck about that jerk's fathers? Oh. Oh, no. I suddenly contract every muscle in my body. Yep, I was right. I did screw up big time. Way to go, Eloi. You never learned to shut your big mouth. After all, there's probably only one person in this entire kingdom with two fathers whose opinion matters in this competition. Huh. Nice to meet you, Prince Melbourne. The bear seems to mischievously enjoy this moment of embarrassment before bursting into laughter. Ha 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 ha! I love doing that. I'm not going to eat you alive, little bunny. You can relax. Now, let's get serious, shall we? I'd like to know your names. Caught between the stress of having insulted the crown prince and said prince's qu quip, I began to smile nervously as I scratched my ears. <laughs> um, uh, Eloise, and the scared falcon behind me is a cat. The bird raises a talon while smiling shyly before prostrating himself as much as he can to disappear behind me. And considering my size, that's a feat in of itself. If there's anything I didn't expect to see in my life, it's someone hiding behind me. As I gather all my courage just to keep from cowering in fear before the bear who is currently looking at me from head to toe, his eyes finally land on my rapier. What's that? A, a sword? A badly held sword. Gillian, I, I want to catch up on my training session tomorrow. And our guests are also invited. They obviously have some things to learn. The prince's gaze is especially insistent when it lands on me. Something tells me that accepting his invitation isn't really an option and that I really should show up for this training tomorrow. Wait a second, a private session with the Crown Prince? Come on, Eloy, it's a golden opportunity to score some points. Of course you're going to show up. I will be there, your excellency? The princely mountain of muscle swings his arms behind his back. He never looks as stern as he does now. I prefer your highness. The bear remains impassive as I watch him to find a trace of humor in his demeanor. So, I I'll be there, your highness. A heavy silence ensues, and the bear puts an end to it while maintaining his serious air. I was joking. <laughs> This is it! I've reached my limit! I'm gonna slap the Crown Prince and probably end up sliced and diced by his guards. I die young, but I've had a good life, and it'll be worth it. I blame the bandits and the exhaustion. A playful smile finally appears on his lips as if to taunt me even more, but this time he has at least the kindness not to laugh out loud. Fortunately, his, he turns his attention to the two guards who, who accompany him, giving me the opportunity to take a breather. Guide our guests to their rooms. I think they'll need some rest before the competition. One of the guards invites us to follow him with a, mo with a movement of his paw. A cat and I follow him, leaving behind the eccentric inhabitants of this place. I'm beginning to think that nobody is normal around here. I know nobles have always had a way, had a, had a bit of a weird side, but between Tenek and the Prince, I don't know how long I can keep my composure if I don't get some sleep. I barely pay attention to the corridors the guards lead us through. The last encounter with Maleborn drained me of what little energy I had left, and all I want to do is collapse on a cozy mattress. We arrive in front of our rooms, and the guards give us our keys before leaving us alone. A cat is installed in the room next to mine, at the end of a corridor that seems to be intended for our guests. I glance at the hawk, who seems to be struggling with the lock, looking as exhausted as I am. After finally unlocking his door, he catches my eye and, shy and, smi and smiles shyly. Uh, good, good night, Eloi. I'm glad I met you. He looks much more sincere now he did, than he did after the attack, so I smile back at him with just as much sincerity. Yeah, me too, a cat. He finally enters his room and I do the same. Throwing myself on the bed, barely taking the time to, to drop my clothes on the floor. Please let me sleep peacefully. I don't want any weird nightmares this time. Knock, knock. Oh, let me sleep. Knock, knock. Seriously, I want to nap just a bit more. It hasn't been the most pleasant night after what happened yesterday. Knock, knock. Second y'all, water time.
The castle better be on fire. Otherwise, I swear that whoever knocks on the door will wait for me eternally. One minute, I'm coming. Nice room. Actually, that looks kind of like a... Looks kind of like the room in like a room in a... Yeah, definitely looks like a room in a castle. Or a church. <laughs> I mean, or a convent, I guess. I drag myself out of bed more than I actually get up. It's way too early for me, and I spent part of the night tossing and turning. In other words, my mood isn't exactly at its best right now, and I'm being woken up early in the morning by someone pounding loudly on my door. As I look around to see the clothes from the night before scattered on the floor. Mm hmm. Maybe I should get dressed before I open the door. Although, it would probably be hilarious to present myself naked to whoever is knocking. No, Eloi, no! I'll start your life here with that kind of reputation. I rummage through my bag and quickly pull out a shirt and pants before jumping into the clothes. I probably don't look very presentable, but right now I don't really care. After a long sigh, I walk, I walk slowly to the door, preparing to bring my righteous wrath upon the person who dares to wake me in the wee hours of the day. As I open the door and prepare to unleash a torrent of rage on the impudent who dared to wake me, I am suddenly stopped in my tracks when I come face to face with a heavily armored figure. Raising my muzzle, I can see Gilliant, his head bent so that he can look at me. His right eye is fixed on me while his left is watching straight ahead. I expected him to remove his helmet once inside the castle, but he's still wearing it. Any desire to yell at the warrior is now completely gone. I remember perfectly well what he is capable of, and I feel no need to piss him off. I plaster a shy smile on my face before greeting Gillian with a small wave of my paw. Hey, Gillian! What brings you here so early in the morning? A long sigh escapes from the panther's lips. So much for staying on his good side, I guess. We are way past early in the morning. Yesterday was a long day, and I'm an artist. I I'm allowed to have some eccentricities, aren't I? My attempt at humor is rewarded with the same look he's been giving me since this conversation began. A dead serious stare. The capital is no shortage of difficult audiences, apparently. I'm gonna have to pull out all the stops if I want to win them over. I suppose so. In any case, you'll have to get used to waking up earlier in the future. Life doesn't begin in the late morning when you live in a castle. So I'll have to make an effort, I guess. You didn't answer my question, though. Not that I don't appreciate your presence, but I'm curious as to why you're here. He straightens up, crossing his arms behind his back before dipping his right eye into mine. My lord simply wished to remind you that you were expected for this afternoon's training session, and that he would be extremely disappointed to see you shirk your duties. His gaze briefly hardens as I turn my head away. Not that I had any intention of not going on this date, but Gillian seems to be able to kill someone with a look. That panther is intimidating. I'm not going to provoke him. We'll start after dinner. The training room is on the first floor of the East Wing, so it shouldn't be too difficult to find. Don't be late. I'll do my best. After all, I, I promise to be there. Gillian is judging me again, and this time I can see something new in his right eye. A little gleam of amusement? I hope so. I also dare to hope that you will make the effort for this afternoon to make sure that your shirt is right side up. Appearances are everything here. Red is quickly rising my ears, and I can feel my face heating up slightly. Great. Absolutely perfect. I'm still able to look more foolish every day. It's his fault, too, waking me up like this. Just try to make up for it a little, though. Like I said, I just woke up. A little approximation is expected in these types of situations. I promise, I'll be all dolled up by later. We'll see. On that note, I unfortunately have other obligations. Good end of morning. He pauses hesitantly before sighing and speaking again. And get some air. Get out of your room and go for a walk. Don't stay in there after what happened yesterday. You need to get your mind off of it. I wasn't expecting that at all. Not that it's bad advice, but it's nice to nice of him to try to help me. I just hope it doesn't mean that I look that, I look that miserable. But indeed, I, a change of air won't hurt me. And then I'm on, and then I'm in the capital, the most beautiful city in the kingdom. There must be so much to see and do. It would be a shame to spend time locked up in the castle. It's like you know, water time. I think I'll do that once I get my clothes in order, and I need to clean what I was wearing yesterday too. You have a basket in your room. Put your clothes in it and leave outside your door. A servant will clean it for you. Ooh, I could get used to life here. I appreciate these kinds of little perks. I don't doubt it for a second. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go. We'll see each other at training. Gillian gives me a polite nod before leaving, while I wave him goodbye. Once he disappears around the corner from the hallway, I slam the door and sigh. I forgot I had to see the prince about this training thing. It's not today that I'll get a day off, it seems. Eh, hopefully we'll just bang sticks together for a few minutes and he'll leave me alone. Besides, I'm not going to turn down an opportunity to spend time with royalty. But right now, I need to get my head together. I can't let the events of yesterday work on me work on me too much. And that starts with something simple. I need to get my shirt back in, back in the right way. As strange as it may sound for someone who was born in a small mountain village and spent most of his life on the road, I think I'm made for the city. I'm at home among the street crowd, avoiding passers-by while my senses are constantly stimulated. 
I must confess that so far the capital is not disappointing me. I am still in the vicinity of the Royal Palace, and the streets are absolutely packed. Dozens of stores are open, and I can smell the pastries displayed in the front of some of them, spreading their sweet scents into the street. Let my legs lead me, not really thinking about where I'm going. Not that I could really make a decision. I barely know anything about Frostfang, after all. I find it strange that I don't see any snow or ice within the city itself. I guess whatever it is that makes the pavement warm under my paw keeps the cold from spreading throughout the city. Not that I'm complaining. After the last few days, I've seen enough fucking snow to last me a lifetime. I'm sure a cat feels the same way I do. Alright y'all, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right there. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or a tip if you can, it always help. Also y'all, check out that Patreon. Anyway y'all, I'll see you in the next video. I love you all. Bye bye